A vehicle burst into flames after an Israeli airstrike on Gaza, killing two men. The strike comes in response to rocket fire from Hamas-ruled territory targeting Israel. A vehicle exploded in the Palestinian territory of Gaza on Friday, killing at least two people. The explosion happened shortly after two rockets were fired at Israel from the Hamas-ruled territory, causing no damage or injury. According to local media, the Israeli army said it had carried out a targeted assassination. Israel often bombs militant targets in coastal Gaza in response to rocket fire, which gutted a metallic blue car, killing two men and wounding a third. At least two of the victims were inside the vehicle when the explosion occurred, witnesses said. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, March 12th, 2012, and I'm Darko. You can check out my website, it's ggnonline.com. And also on YouTube, it's DDarko2012, and my other YouTube channel is DDarko2013. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. All right, this first article I have up is U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carrier heads to Persian Gulf. I've covered this article before. Um, it was a, basically the same video that's floating around the Internet. It was a very well-made one, too, though. But it was about uh, basically this USS Enterprise being one of the oldest uh, nuclear-powered uh, aircraft carriers in the U.S. fleet, and basically, in order to dispose of it properly, uh, it costs a lot of money. So they're just going to sink this sucker, and what better way to do it than off the uh, or inside the Persian Gulf, and that will allow um, uh, Israel to feel as if uh, they've been attacked, and and they're going to go out and, and start striking. So CNN reported the U.S. Uh, oldest active warship. Uh, will be on standby in case of a conflict with Iran. The Enterprise is as ready and capable as she has ever been throughout her 50 years, says the carrier, which holds about 4,000 people, have taken part in several wars. It will be uh, deployed to the Persian Gulf together with other warships, forming a carrier strike group. And I love this comment down here. The Persian Gulf, the final frontier. This is the voyage of the USS Enterprise. It's continuing mission to explode strange new countries, to destroy all life and civilizations, to bomb what no man has ever bombed before. Captain Hamilton's log, we arrived in the Persian Gulf today with a strong feeling to commit more crimes against humanity. However, our arrival was not welcomed by the Iranian Navy. We set about in battle arrangement to invade their territorial waters and show them who's boss. However, they quickly sunk us to the bottom of the Gulf. I write this log while in Iranian custody. The spy master Mir Dagan on Iran's threat. Uh, this individual has been described as hard charging and stops at nothing. Been the chief of Mossad, the Israeli uh, intelligence, for more than eight years, and he went on and spoke out publicly, voicing opposition to Israel launching preemptive airstrikes against Iran's nuclear facilities anytime soon. Then the, he was asked, uh, "Do you think Ahmadinejad is rational?" The answer is yes. Not exactly our rationale, but I think he is rational. And that's the quote that they took. The regime in Iran is very rational one, a former Israeli intelligence chief tells CBS. And uh, what's interesting is that uh, Ahmadinejad, uh, who is now a lame duck due to the elections, is actually more uh, friendly to the West than the Ayatollah and uh, these clerics and that. And just because of uh, the U.S. and Israeli's uh, stance, the U.K.'s, uh, they're sa saber rattling, trying to get, instigate a war here with Iran. Um, they've actually caused the more um, hardcore radical side of Iran to come out, kind of like in Pakistan and other places. So this is all a result of uh, what they're doing. David Grossman speaks out against war with Iran. His first public statement on the conflict with Iran. David Grossman, a leading Israeli novelist of the past generation, on the strongest voice of his country's moral conscience, told the nation that he is opposed to an attack on the Islamic Republic by Israel or the United States, saying it is a, the likely consequence uh, were more daunting even than those of Iran building nuclear weapons. He basically went on and said, even if they do, uh, Iran does possess or get nuclear weapons, that Israel sh is just going to have to live with it. So it's here, uh, <laughs> who has more weapons than any nation, all the nations combined, most likely. Uh, aircraft carrier Enterprise sets off on final journey direction Iran. So there you go. After the Enterprise leaves on Sunday, which it just did, three Norfolk-based guided missile destroyers will head out on Monday, the USS Porter, USS Nitsi, and the USS James uh, Williams. 
This is interesting. It says that the aircraft squadrons embarked aboard the Enterprise our VFA, which is Navy. But look at this. Marine Fighter Attack Squadron, VMFA 251 Thunderbolts. That's interesting. I was on the same base as these guys, VMFA 224, the Fighting Bengals. Uh, but you want to know what's rational, guys, is that when in my, in my unit that I was in, 224 Bengals, they actually had no mishaps, nothing. And uh, we were supposed to deploy it twice. Uh, right before I got out, and they never did. And uh, that 251 group actually had a, a, a bird, a plane go down right there on the base. <laughs> yeah, it crashed, right? And uh, and they actually got sent over before us. So that just goes to show you the rationale. And we have here Egyptian MPs vote to expel Israeli envoy. So the Egyptian parliament has voted to expel the Israeli ambassador and halt gas exports to Israel. That's pretty big news because I've been following that. Kind of ties things together. Are the as far as the regime change goes, are the MEKs uh, U.S. friends? its worst enemies. So for years, slew of advocates, many of whom have been paid for the services, had flooded the U.S. airways on behalf of the Mujahideen, a State Department-designated foreign terrorist organization opposed to the Iranian regime. UN Special Representatives in Iraq, Martin Kobler, with help from the U.S. Embassy in Iraq and the State Department, has organized efforts to relocate the Mujahideen to Camp Liberty, a former U.S. military base near Baghdad Airport. The first convoy of about 400 terrorist members arrived there last month. It says here that the second convoy, about 400 members, arrived Thursday at Camp Liberty, Reuters reported. So we'll see this, uh, the rationale again here. A good example of it, U.S. Uh, Department of State, their own website, foreign terrorist organizations, and you go down oh number 29 the mek <laughs> uh, okay moving on here Mossad training terrorists to kill iran's nuclear scientists u.s officials claim israel is funding dissident peoples mujahideen of iran say officials in tehran israelis build the world's biggest detention center thousands of african asylum seekers fleeing persecution could end up in the Negev desert camp. Human rights groups fear that the detention center, the largest of its kind in the world, with a capacity to hold 8,000 uh, migrants, will turn into a festering refugee camp and deprive those escaping persecution at home of their rights to seek asylum in Israel. Military exercises, uh, Agile Spirit 2012 starts in Georgia. U.S. Marines and Georgian Armed Forces are participating in exercise Agile Spirit 2012. Its purpose is to increase interoperability between the forces and exchange and enhance each other's capability or capacity in counterinsurgency, blah, 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 right? It's like a nice public relations statement. Israel planned to use Georgia air bases in Iran attack. This is from 8-20-2008, Israel, the Caucasus. Israel began selling arms to Georgia uh, seven years ago, and it was U.S. grants that facilitated these purchases from Israel came former minister and former Tel Aviv mayor representing uh, the Elbit Systems and his brother. It goes on here, it says, for Israeli UAV spy drones made by uh, this uh, contractor and conducted recon flights over, over southern Russia as well into the nearby Iran. And you remember in 2008, I believe it was, uh, you had this, right? Uh, the, the president of Georgia, Saakashvili, evidently thought the United States would come to his side when, uh, if Russian troops pushed him back into Georgia after ordering an attack on August 8th of the breakaway province of South Ossetia. Yeah, that was a nice little false flag. And in the, uh, in the media, in the media, they were saying that Russia had attacked them and they were calling for NATO to come in and all that. So. Or bloodshed. The opposition claims government forces are storming villages and killing soldiers who defected. And now the Assad government says it's found weapons from other countries. CNN's Nick Robertson is in Beirut. Um, so, so, Nick, the government says the weapons are coming from Israel? It is nothing better than the, that the Syrian government would like than to try to say that Israel is somehow behind the opposition. Why? Because Israel, because Israel is the enemy of pretty much uh, everyone in their minds in Syria at the moment. So to say that would, would cast a, a huge shadow of doubt over the opposition and who was funding them and certainly try and build support for himself, Bashar al-Assad. The reality is that we haven't seen any evidence from the Syrian government that there is any wholesale export of weapons coming 
coming from Israel into Syria. There's a real possibility there may be some Israeli-made weapons in Syria right now. The Free Syrian Army is trying to get its hands on any weapons possible. The borders between uh, between Lebanon and Turkey into Syria are all quite porous. A few weapons have been getting across from many different countries. But even if the Syrian government has found a few Israeli-made weapons, it certainly doesn't. Uh, it certainly doesn't add up to the, their implication that Israel is somehow supporting the opposition. It just doesn't seem to hold water right now. So there you go, folks. A nice little propaganda piece, uh, just like uh, Syrian Danny or Zionist Danny, who they uh, had to do some damage control over their little uh, mockingbird uh, operation, little CIA operation going on, headed up by Mr. Anderson Cooper. They don't like when they get called out, I guess. It says here, Arab countries sending mercenaries into Syria. This is from the Jerusalem Post. Arab countries are sending mercenaries to Syria to thwart any chance of negotiated settlement to end Assad's crackdown on a long year uprising of his rule. So again, this is kind of another propaganda piece saying that Iran was their partner, but now Iran's saying that maybe they should enact reforms to take uh, account of popular grievances. And I think they just passed the constitution and they're open to talks and stuff like that. It says here, Russia accuses Libya of training Syrian rebels. So it says here, Russia... Uh, Demanded Wednesday that NATO apologize for civilian casualties during the uprising in Libya last year and accused the Libyan government of supporting and training a training center for Syrian rebels, provoking a sharp response from the U.S. and Libya Prime Minister. U.S. and their allies are beginning to uh, talk of potential military intervention in Syria and have covered this before. You know, just in the past month or two, not longer than that, but really it's been escalating as far as trying to declare a humanitarian corridor. It says a move to intervene militarily has no legal basis and could potentially escalate the conflict. Well, it definitely escalate it, um, but there is a legal basis, and uh, I'll get into that. Let's check out this video. UN humanitarian chief Valerie Amos calls for unlimited aid access to Syria's worst hit areas. Speaking at a news conference in Ankara, Amos said she had spoken to Syrian government representatives, but they'd asked for more time. However, the government have agreed to a limited assessment uh, exercise to be conducted by UN agencies and uh, the Syrian authorities of the heavy shelling follows a few days of relative calm during which Amos visited Homs and said part of the city had been completely destroyed. UN and Arab League envoy Kofi Annan is due to arrive in Damascus on Saturday to try to calm the year-old conflict. Sunita so we're just in golf. We're just uh, swimming and drowning in this uh, propaganda, right? Because uh, what? Look at the title. U UN Humanitarian Chief Demands Syria Aid Access. Well, they've already been there. They've already allowed the Red Cross to go in there. Um, they cleared out the actual rebels. Um, like I said before, so I've already reported on this. They've already cleared them out so the Red Cross and the UN can go in there. So it's because of the government that they're actually able to go in. They secured the area. Um, and then you just heard her right there say, yeah, they've actually agreed to allow them uh, to come in there and assess the situation like they did to the Arab League. But the Arab League, of course, is what sold out to the West and all that. So, And uh, the Assad government answered everything that they needed to answer to the uh, to the observers when they were in the country. So it says here, Syria, UN envoy enters Homs with Red, uh, Red Crescent. It's basically Red Cross. So the UN envoy enters there. And then Syria crisis, Red Cross enters the Baba uh, area and finds the neighborhood empty. Well, where are they going? Remember this article? Setting the precedent, NATO may use R2P to intervene in Syria forcing millions of refugees to flee to Turkey's southern border. Some analysis uh, claim that this would potentially constitute an Article 5 situation that could lead to Ankara to call for a NATO collective defense initiative. And I found this interesting that the people that are leaving Syria are going everywhere except for Turkey. So Syrian Bedouin find shelter in Jordan. And then look at this. Uh, Syrians fleeing to Lebanon feared slaughter in Assad's backlash. So I'm thinking that uh, Assad's government is actually uh, telling these people, if you're going to leave, just don't go to Turkey. Go anywhere. Go to Lebanon. Go to um, uh, Jordan. But just don't go to Turkey. <laughs> 
Because if you do, they're gonna they're gonna declare a humanitarian corridor and they're gonna start bombing the shit out of all of them. But they'll say, oh, they feared slaughter and a sod backlash. You probably asked one person while the rest of them probably didn't want to talk to him because they knew they're gonna put a loaded headline in there like that. U.S. servicemen killed 16 uh, in Afghan village shooting. Officially, nearly all of them were women and children. They said that it was due to uh, a, a breakdown. U.S.-led forces must leave Afghanistan, says a former Afghan prime minister. Afghanistan Taliban vowed revenge for civilians killed by American soldier. You think anything will happen? Happen to these guys. No criminal charges against five soldiers involved in Koran burning and uh, urinating video. Criminal charges would be over the top. We know British SAS are in Somalia for their oil, but what? Australian SAS are in Africa as well. This is GGN. Thank you.